Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the fourth installation of Project Piggy's Game Dev Talks, where our invited guests will talk about project, project and time management, mental health, and how to do remote working. But before that, we have a few announcements for everyone. So we would like to invite everyone to we would like to invite everyone to apply for our Project Piggy program. The selected game developers will be mentored directly by pioneer Filipino game developers. So for more information about the program, please visit us at www.projectpiggy.com. Um, and next in our announcement, um, please join us in our Project Piggy Discord channel and get a chance to directly interact with, our, with your fellow game developers and mentors at gamedevph.com. Okay, so... Another announcement, of course, so before we start, the organizers of the Project Piggy, mainly Yang Yang Mobile, Ranida Games, and Squeaky Wheel, will be giving away two bundles of games that includes uh, game, game Steam Keys from Love Esquire, Bayani, Basketball Slam, Political Animals, Academia School Simulator, and Ruin Arc. To two lucky registered attendees, please stay tuned until the end to know if you've won the raffle. Okay. So I'm sure you're all excited um, to meet our special guests tonight. So I would like to introduce first our official and lovely moderator tonight, Miss Bea Aranas. Okay. So Hello. Is the executive um, assistant of GDAP or Game Developers Association of the Philippines, her personal interest and love for games have inspired her to work for GDAP. She hopes that her work contributions can also help the creative industry flourish in the Philippines. So without any more delay, I would like to introduce Ms. Bea Aranas. Okay, so next in our panel, we have, uh, of course, five special guests. So let us all welcome. Um, let's start with, uh, with Ms. Jem first. And, okay, Ms. Jem. So Ms. Jem have been... Ah, sorry. So, Miss Jem is Monstronauts um, game producer. So, Miss Jem have been in the game industry as an artist and then a game producer for almost a decade now. And she likes to play city building games and she likes to trash talk in multiplayer online battle arena. Okay. So, let's give her, let's give Miss Jem a virtual applause, everyone. So, next on our list is Miss Josette Ann. So, okay, let's, let's call Miss Josette. Okay. So, Miss Josette have already spent you know more than seven years in the game and art industry and have managed and handled a handful of projects like battlefield 2014 last of us 2 cyberpunk 2077 and more so ayun hi miss josette okay next is jester to zero okay. so mr jester hi that's tesoro sorry so mr jester um is have been in the indie game industry for about 15 years now. So he's also a board member of the Game Developers Associ Association of the Philippines and International Game Developers Association, Manila. So let's all give Mr. Jester a warm welcome. Okay. Hello, so, Good evening. Second to the last is Ran Rania Sales. So he's, he's also a game producer for Ubisoft Kyiv in Ukraine. He works uh, he works with Catch Up in in developing hyper casual titles and specializes in mobile games so he, he he tonight he brings us with uh with eight years in the game dev industry he has worked with game loft vietnam and synergy 88 so he also used to run his own small indie studio light break games and okay to finalize our list of guests tonight i would like to um bring in mr ryan sumo so Ryan is the co-founder of uh, one of the co-founder of Project Piggy and Squeaky Wheel Studios. He's currently in Sweden, um, working for Paradox Interactive as their project, a product manager. So he has worked for ten years in the industry, starting from J2ME mobile games before going to freelance and creating artwork for cult classic indie games like Space Chem and Prison Architect. Okay, so everyone, welcome. And I will be turning over the floor to Miss Bea. Okay, enjoy. All right. So, hello, everyone. Good evening. Thank you for um, being a part of this event. So, to start off, we'll formally start our panel discussions 
with our first question. So I hope our panelists are ready for the first question. So number one, where do you find people to join your team? And what are the signs or qualities that you look for before accepting them? Let's start with Miss Jem. <laughs> okay. Um, as in Monster Nuts, we just try to post in different Facebook groups, um, sometimes in LinkedIn. Um, as for the qualities, it depends on what position we're looking for. Um, we have exams and interviews in place. Um, but uh, in general, we're looking for someone with the right skill set. Like, can you do the job right? And of course, attitude. So having the right attitude um, contributes to the overall output or deliverable. Right. Yeah, I think everyone can also agree to that. Yes, Serenio, yeah. would, would you like to add to that? Oh, uh <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> sorry, na na But basically, yeah, yeah, LinkedIn is what we use. Aside from traditional uh, job boards like Glassdoor or uh, Job Street, uh, and like Miss Jem said, mindset is a very big thing. Uh, we look for, uh, of course, the, uh, the skill set is king. You know, if you can do the job right, the technical skills. But we also look for a proper mindset uh, if the person has a leadership mindset that, you know, you're not just a drone doing your job day in and day out. We want some people who who's willing to provide support to other team members or good with collaboration and communication skills. So, yeah, uh, definitely mindset is uh, just right there next to the skill set and technical skills. Right. Yes, I agree. Um, is there anyone who would like to add to that aside from what was given so far, like the technical skills and the mindset? Um, maybe Miss for us uh, in Secret uh, Six. Uh, yes, uh, for us in Secret Six, um, uh, for the three D team at least, um, we actually really go to our station, scour through different artists, um, locally and sometimes internationally, and then we also tap into schools for interns um, or our guys who are nearing graduation. Uh, we really look into the quality of their portfolio because uh, we feel that's where we see how much driven they are in terms of the quality of their work. Um, they, we feel that um, we see versatility in terms of the actual output um, when we check out um, portfolios or the games that they've created already for school or for other companies. I see. Okay, thank you. Um, how about Sir Jester? Would you like to share? Hi. Yes. Uh, so for Definite Studios, where do you find people to join your team? We, first of all, Job Street. I think hindi nawawala in Job Street. Then we, we go to Facebook groups like uh, GDAP, IGDA. Okay, uh, then we also have LinkedIn. Uh, I think for 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 junior up to mid level positions, that that should be enough. For for senior positions, uh, more on LinkedIn or headhunting or referrals. Uh, okay. Then what are the signs? or qualities that you look for before accepting them. Uh, I totally agree with Jem and Daniel. Mindset is super important. Uh, but of course, depending on the position, technical skill na required, it's a must. Uh, but for, for example, for our artists uh, and in, in our case, as a different studios, yung, yung educational background, uh, pwede namin i, huwag masyadong i, i way basta kayang palitan ng experience and skill set. So, so, for example, if it's really good, even though, for example, senior high, uh, natapos, tapos yung college din natapos, but if he's a really good artist, like like check lahat, don't even think about it. Hire ka agad. <laughs> uh, regardless of the educational background, meron din kasi kami mga artists na nurse, 
may artist kami na na architect, may nurse, may may artist kami na programmer. <laughs> so so I think yung scale uh, mas important kaysa dun sa dun sa educational uh, background or relevance yung natapos niya. Uh, pero sa men, for example, sa akin ang pinaka-important is dapat mag-match yung personality niya doon sa culture namin. Yun yung pinaka-important. Pinaka Yun yung parang final question. Uh, if we think na he's okay, he's good, pero hindi mag-match, hindi na namin tinutuloy. Uh, different studios, different cultures, different studios, different uh, setup. So sa amin, uh, medyo ano kasi kami, medyo, medyo, medyo makulit na medyo magulo. Na. <laughs> so kailangan namin mga tao medyo kaya yung kulit namin, kaya yung gulo namin. <laughs> so yun yung pinaka-important. Pag, pag pumasa siya doon, go na. So, sorry, yes. mahaba at tatasagot ko. Go. No, actually, it's it's uh, it's funny because uh, that's how I also I also feel. Uh, uh, it should be a a good part of when finding someone to be a part of your team. So tama nga naman po si Sir Jester when it comes to uh, mm. making sure that when it it not only uh, looks after the people that. Uh, you already have in your in your team or in your company or in your studio, but it also um, looks into like the future or like, a little bit far into the future. So, yeah. And then to the the last person I have to call is <laughs> is Sir Rai. Yeah. Um, may medyo may echo pala dito sa ano namin sa apartment namin. Um, uh, yeah. So I wanted to siguro kasi where the first two answers were more from a larger company perspective or a more established company perspective. Um, so I'll go in a different direction. Even though I'm part of Paradox, I, I did start a, a small studio, a new, new squeaky wheel. And um, so I found my co-founders there uh, mostly through actually mga, mga IGDA Manila na game jams. And so I would uh, observe you mga you know, some as a game jam, and I check out like what kind of games do they make, what, and kind of get an idea of ah, okay, parang medyo interested sila sa mga ganitong classing games. And so even though we weren't actually kay kami ni uh, Tristan Angeles and and Marnell Estrada, we weren't actually like friends. But then I got a good idea of um, like what kind of uh, games they were interested in making through my experiences, like watching them during some mga game jams. So like being part of those kinds of events like if you're looking for team members if you want to create a small team like um, being part of a community like in game dev uh, game dev ph uh, and and uh, igda manila it's a good way to to get to know people and see like uh, when it comes to um the kind of games that you want to make and with regards to yung, yung skill set uh well back then we were a much uh, smaller uh community you know? so parang word, word sort sort of travels then parang, okay ba ka, ano? okay ba sa, sa, sa work tong si, si ganito, si ganyan? and so like um that's a, a good way then to to, to figure out uh, as as someone na parang maybe you don't have really a process yet like say like, sa start out ka parang wala ka pang process for like for like hiring or whatever um that's a good way to find out like if uh if, if if people are are capable, um, see, Raniel, parang I think you mentioned earlier na like start kare ng sarili mong company for a while. Like, do you yes. have any thoughts on like on, on that? Parang finding team members at that uh, scale versus at that at, at, at the beginning of a startup. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. very very um uh, very very relatable yung sinabi mo sir Ryan. We're in. Uh, I started my uh, Lightbird games with. Uh, friends basically uh schoolmate uh kasama ko sa team dati uh just one dev one artist me and we just started doing projects and it's exactly what you said ka vibes mo ba you are in the same you're in sync even though admittedly at the beginning we were not so skilled let's say we were probably junior middle developers at that point and but you know 
uh, once you find the correct people to take the journey with, uh, uh, I think that's one of the most important part, especially for indies. Uh, mm-hmm. And you will be, you know, you will be facing a lot of hardship together. So it's really important that the people you start the company with or start the startup with are people who are, you know, uh, who's going to ride the storm with you. Uh, rather than just, uh, you know, like you said, in traditional uh, larger companies, if if, the, uh, if you know the boat starts getting rocky, then people will just jump ship. So you need to make sure the people you uh, start your uh, startups with are basically, you know, brothers or sisters for that point. Uh, so I, yeah, I totally agree with what you said. Cool. Well, thank you for. I think um, all of your answers actually um, are of importance, but uh, to have a follow-up question, actually, since both every most of the answers um, revolve around skill set and attitude, um, which one would you prefer over the other, having the skill set or having the attitude? That's that's the question. I think for us um malaking factor yung yung attitude um especially we're in triple a games and super nakapagod everything is changing everything is um going for a new technology most of the time so important yung attitude because it's the one that drives you most of the time are you still inspired um are you one with the team are you one with the team in terms of um and um of goals um pagpagod ka what do you do um do you hate the work or you work um thinking um goal mo is magandang quality push for higher higher quality and kasi at the end of the day it's games it should be fun so dapat fun talaga yung, yung attitude mo uh, work is work. <laughs> That's a great answer. Um, anyone would like to follow up? Hi, yes, I'd like to add. Um, if you have the right attitude, um, the skills na tututunan yan eh, you can learn if if you're open to new things, feedback. Um, if you're yeah, if you're driven, you want to improve on your own. Um, yeah, I think mas matimbang yung attitude. Yeah, uh, just a simple yeah. like parang math that I'd like to think uh, about it. Like, let's say you have 10 people na more or less same sila and then may some, out of, one out of those 10 is really good at their job. Um, but then everyone has to like interface for, like has, has to work with this one person who's really good at their job. If that person has a bad attitude, then you are lowering the productivity or like the work uh, quality of the other nine people in the team just because of that mm-hmm. one person. So that's mm-hmm. that's one way to like kind of easily think about it in terms of, of numbers. So I would yeah, definitely weigh, um, you know, more towards uh, attitude versus uh, skill set. Uh, Sir Rainiel or Sir Jester? Yeah, uh, I totally agree with them. Attitude is pretty much number one. I would rather work with a junior or middle developer, na uh, you know is uh, has a good attitude, has a good mindset, has an inspiration, rather than a senior developer na uh, has a good skill set, but at the end of the day would has a you know an off-putting attitude. Uh, sabi nga mga diva, uh, they're really hard to work with uh, in terms of. Um, uh, ang hirap bigyan ng feedback, ang hirap bigyan ng uh, uh, points because uh, some people's uh, some people with the skill set they think they're invincible. They're not. Everyone is not perfect in this field, so uh, there will be feedbacks. And uh, I would rather m- work with a person na pagbinigyan mong feedback, he'll take it constructively and 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 actively improve himself and grow. Uh, and it's also fulfilling to see that person grow before your eyes rather than you know, uh, you get uh, uh, this person, and every time you give him feedback, he bigyang kanya na parang eh, fine, uh, kay mga right. producer, kay mga project manager. <laughs> so, so yeah, uh, totally agree with them. Yeah, so I think 
um, everyone mostly agrees, or everyone completely agrees that the uh, that that attitude, yes, over, attitude outweighs skills. Yeah, outweighs skills. Uh, but I'd like to clarify, lang there are some mm. misconceptions. Uh, attitude, attitude doesn't mean that you that oh, John, they simply need to be nice. Uh no, it's not just being nice. Attitude towards work, then like professionalism, like like uh like. Like never stopping uh, to improve uh, their uh, yourself, uh, trying to study new things. You, that's part of that good attitude, not just being nice. Because uh, being nice is not enough. Uh, so just want to make that clear. Right, that's correct. Uh, so actually, um, we're seeing a lot of questions in, in the FB chat right now. However, um, we'll have a segment for that later on at the end of the panel questions. So uh, without further ado, let me proceed with the next question. So what are the tools that you use to keep track of your team's productivity? So, uh, we can start with um, oh, Sir Rai, would you like to start? Sure. Um, I think did we lose someone? Oh. I think, yeah. Yeah. Yes. See, I thought. Oh, anyway. Oh. Um. So yeah, we'll. I'll, I'll. I'll start. It's been a while for me. Um. So I mean, there's the usual Excel, right? For <laughs> for 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 time tracking and stuff. That's the your or Excel. Right? I mean, Google Sheets. I guess is the more more common now, and that's easier for for everyone to, um, kind of like look at and have a shared schedule. Um, we did, um, uh, some, uh, I'm not trying to figure out how to call it, but I'm, some time management, but like in squeaky wheel, we're only a, a team of five and we sort of had to operate on trust. No matter what I'm talking about. Um, and so we just had a, uh, oof, I forget what you call it, but it's, um, it's a small program that kind of tracks what you're doing. On, on on your computer and then you can look at it at, at the end of the day and you can see oh, okay so i spent like x amount of time on social media x amount of time on on photoshop and then you have a better idea of like how you spend your day and then you can just kind of self uh regulate about okay so i maybe i should you know um stop opening social media so what, one of the things that i would do before was um i had a chrome um what do you call it? it's not, not an application um, extension extension yeah nah, I know. uh that wouldn't let me access facebook like during work hours and <laughs> like that that gave me an extra one hour of work every day just because i uh, just, i had to physically i was not able to you know to, to, to go on social media so just uh there's some tools like that um yeah like mostly we we used uh yeah google sheets for for that and um and that that time tracking tool we also had a um, uh, it's hack and plan. Um, I, I forget what kind of uh, a tool you call this. It's it's kind of like Jira, like where you uh, you, you assign uh, each, um, people tasks, and that's kind of how we 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 mostly track our um, I guess our our, our efficiency or our, our production level. So. Yeah, but I'm interested to know like what uh, other people uh, use to, um, to to manage their their, their teams. Yeah. Uh, um, yes. Yes. Sorry. If I, would you like if to follow? I, yes, if I can follow up, Sir Ryan's comments. Uh, the software he was actually talking about for our uh, watchers is Procast uh, Procastri Tracker, <laughs> Procastri Tracker, Procrastination Tracker. <laughs> so uh, shortened. So it's a tool that you install in your PC and it tracks whatever you're doing, everything in your, and then it gives you the breakdown. Uh, as for the tools that we use, of course, the classic project management tools for task tracking is Trello, Asana, uh, Microsoft Planner, all the same thing, just different brands. Uh, different companies use different ones, but they're basically, you know, this uh, this. Uh, boards where you keep your uh, project tasks. When we were smaller, so light break, we kind of liked the physical approach with uh, post-it notes in a whiteboard. You kind of it it kind of gives you that uh, you know physical feeling. But now with the work from home situation, yeah, uh, this uh, work boards are also working. Uh, for documentation, we use Confluence. Uh, it's basically 
um, a documentation tool. Uh, we also used uh, other things like uh, the usual JIRA for QA tracking, for bug tracking. And um, we also have um, either a spreadsheet or a similar tool of your uh, goals and KPIs. So obviously, we have the daily task na kailangan ito matapos mo on a day-to-day -day basis. But we also kind of like to set uh, personal goals for each people, which is a bit more long term. Let's say in three months' time, your goal is to learn uh, this new render pipeline by Unity, for example, right? Uh, this helps them, and then we do monthly check ins. We try to say, kamusta naman yung tom part of your work to make sure that they're, they're still growing their personal skills or their uh, technical skills rather than just doing the day to day tasks of, okay, today I'm going to fix a bug. The, the next day I'm gonna fix a bug. The next day, the next day, the next day. So yeah, uh, those are the things that we use. All right, welcome back, Miss Thoughts. <laughs> now that you're back, um, yeah. Would you uh, like me to repeat the question yeah. for you, or are you good? I, I'm good. I got the question. I'm I'm just not sure what's already mentioned, but that's fine. Um, for us in outsourcing, we usually just um piggyback on the tools that the clients are using. So we use most that what I've heard was mentioned. Tapos um internally ngayon yung pina on gold as in important is really Discord as in daily chat in sync ups. Um it's it's the closest thing to simulate you know, before na we can just approach each other talk um ayun um and then uh, since we're using most or if not all the tools out there, um, we still use um Google Sheets to be like the main just to track everything else. Um, I guess. <laughs> okay, I think um <clears throat> those are wonderful questions or run wonderful answers to the the question. Um, in the interest of time, uh, let me just uh proceed with the next question. So how do you keep your team members motivated and avoid burnout throughout the whole production process? And for this question, we can start with Sir Jester. Okay. Uh, how do we keep our teams motivated and avoid burnout? Well, for us, uh, we, we keep them motivated by by giving them goals, talking to them individually uh, from time to time. I think uh, management and employees, we have a quarterly talk one-on-one. -on -one. As we ask them about their goals, personal goals, and we try to align it with our with our company goals. Because uh, we 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 need it to align para for them to be motivated. If it's not, we would even suggest for them to to start looking for other <laughs> options or opportunities if it's not really working for them. We're not going to push them away. But for us, we think that it will work best to align your personal goals more with the company goals. So we, we do that. We check, them, we check that from time to time. Uh, then uh, in our daily meetings, we have a, a daily meeting uh, to start ng, ng day namin an average 20 minutes every day so we have like we have quotes we have uh, that people try to explain we have cheat chat we have, we, we have all those like like uh, konting kamustahan konting uh, pagtanong kung okay ba kayo may problem ba kayo you know? we, we make sure that uh, especially during the pandemic they have everything they need in order to do their work uh Tapos, kasi nga, we understand that's the responsibility and job of the management to make sure that they're okay and they can do their job properly. Uh, uh, avoid burnout. We very rarely do OT. In the past six years, we very rarely do OT. Uh, ang probably nag OT lang sa amin developers pag mag build lang. So that's one to twice a year lang nag OT. We don't work on holidays, public holidays. Uh, and we usually have a very long uh, 
Christmas vacation. Because we think that's important. So so we don't believe in OT. Uh, we don't believe in, in crunch. So salmon yun. Nakamute pala ako. Uh, Nakamute pala ako. So um, Miss Jem, would you like to um answer the question, Paul? Yes, okay. Um, each person views motivation differently. Um, I think you gotta understand each and every one in your team. You don't have to be very close, like you don't have to be friends with them. You just gotta understand. I think one channel is through performance evaluation, right? You talk to them one on one. Um um, so there are different um, types of motivation. Some were motivated by incentives, by achieving something. Some were just happy with compliments every now and then. So you just try to meet those. Um, so for those incentives, um, we at Monster Knots, we try to reward, reward everyone's hard work at the end of the year when we have the budget, um, when, we, when, when it permits, right? Um, for those who wants to achieve something on their career, like maybe level up their careers as programmers or as um, they want to become lead artists. Um, we try to give them next level sets of tasks or challenges, or maybe we give them someone to train. And um, others simply just want vacation every now and then. So we just try to accommodate their leaves on the schedule. And some were very motivated by fear. <laughs> Those are the easiest ones, you just threaten them. <laughs> Just kidding. So um, from time to time, we also um, organize game nights um, or virtual parties like um, murder mystery, but yeah, um, Christmas party even in pandemic. Oh, but we before... did that. That was nice. You mystery Manila. <laughs> that, that was nice. So. <laughs> and before pandemic, we also organized team buildings or simple um, trips to amusement parks kapag long weekend. And then, um, yeah, yung pinaka simple eat out lang. Pero um, I'd like to cap though, kasi for everyone um, listening right now. So, ito, I learned this for a very long time. I'm, I'm working in the game industry. Um, every, uh, passion and motivation comes and goes. So, dapat, when you're working, you don't bank on that. You realize eventually when... I know it's actually self-discipline. You have to keep moving forward. You have to push forward. Well, you can't I know, diba, instill this to everyone. But ayun, that's that's the reality of life. You anong gagawin mo kapag nahit mo yung rock bottom? Do you just quit or do you just go out? Uh back back out lang, diba? So yeah, I think um <laughs> I think ayun, um don't just bank on motivation um it takes time pero you'll get there you'll understand na yun nga, it's self discipline i want to, to mention something pala sorry um just going back to the sort of ties into yung may some yung question about ano parang team um parang how to find team members and stuff so so with regards to motivation like uh i think team composition matters like and, and so, so the example I'm going to give is since squeaky wheel when we first started out. So tatlo kami si, uh, si Tristan, ako, and then si Marnell. And like, we have, we have different personalities, but parang mostly we're just very like grim and introverted. And so parang pag nag, nag team dinner kami or something, parang wala, tahimik lahat. And then so it's hard to, ano, parang it's hard to get kind of excited. And then like, I'm the super, I'm the most, of, of, of the three of us, ako na yung pinaka bibo, but that's not really saying much. You know? So, like, I felt forced to, like, be, like, oh, kind of high energy or whatever to try to get some energy in the team going. And and that's hard for me because I'm not naturally like that. Parang, may mga, minsan na, nakaka-chempo na parang, ano, I, I can be funny or whatever. Um, so, like, looking at uh, <laughs> team members, like, um, having good chemistry or, like, finding someone that's, like, if, if you are if you have a, if you look at your team and you think like, okay, that na kami introvert, na medyo tahimik, and ganyan, maybe the next person that you you ask to join is someone like who has energy. Like I don't know if you guys watch yung I don't know Slam Dunk or whatever. Parang kailangan may konting sa kurabi. Parang may medyo medyo wild ng konte just to just to give the, the the team some sort of um, energy. And so like 
I think we found that like when we hired like um, two junior programmers to help us out, yung isas medyo tahimik then, but then the other one was kind of a bit younger and a little bit more sparkier, I guess. And then uh, when it finally came time that the team had grown large enough that I as the CEO could not handle all of the operational stuff and I needed help, I was looking for uh, a COO and then I was interviewing a lot of different people. And then eventually, like, see, see Marika actually um, uh, said, hey, like, I'm interested. And like, oh, so that's great because, like, you you have this skill set. But also, see, see Miss Marika is very, you know, very, sobrang bibusha, like, really, really brings energy everywhere. So every time that we would have, like, a team, uh, like, a team dinner or something, I knew that I had someone with me that could, um, you know, bring bring some joy or bring some energy to uh, to the conversation. So, like, so I think like when you when you're looking for team members, that's definitely also something to consider, and then that also helps with like uh, you know like motivating the team and um, yeah. So yeah, just uh, something that kind of ties those two uh, questions together. Yeah, that that sounds like a uh, actually what what Miss Gem was saying sounded very very inspiring to me. <laughs> it's like na uh, nah, really went into it, uh, and it was I felt the passion through it. So. Um, well, to actually go move on to the next question, let me uh, put this out there. So how do you find balance in sticking with deadlines versus extending them so that your team would have more time to polish uh, the work need that needs to be done, the game or um, your production? Okay, so uh, in Ubisoft and Catch-Up, we have kind of strict deadlines to soft launch games. Uh, however, we also have we also hold a certain level of quality for each of those games that we launched, and we know that if the game's quality is not up to par, it's usually better to to extend the deadline rather than get feedbacks of uh, you know the infamous. Uh, uh, unfinished games uh, uh, na, na, and so it's always better to uh, if you have a community following let, let them know we're polishing the games and then put feedback however there's also the other side of the coin uh, that um, when you are going to extend your deadline you need to defend that decision to a lot of people uh, and you need to take a look at what caused the extension you know what's causing the bottleneck what's causing yung drop in quality why are we not hitting our targets you try to do that you try to solve that and in the long run uh you try to learn from those mistakes and you try to get the people to learn uh okay this sprint we did this thing wrong this thing wrong that's why we have postmortems on the end of each uh, sprint once we learned what's wrong, we're going to avoid that. And in theory, and I know every project manager is struggling with this, in theory, in the long run, that should let us hit deadlines with the quality that we want. So uh, I think that's one way where we balance it. We, we take a look at the quality and we make sure it's uh, you know, in an acceptable level before you even release the game. Yeah. Okay. Uh, does anyone else want to add into um, oh, the us, in outsourcing? Um, medyo mahirap. Like Sir Raniel said, um, sobrang hard deadlines. As imagine everything is outsourced to us. So literally everything is hanging on that deadline, right? But I think the pressure goes to the lead and the, the project managers to really make sure na. Um, we are sort of 10 steps ahead in terms of planning and scheduling because if anything goes wrong, um, it will lead us back to like the, the earlier question of burned out, burned out. And then it can cost you the team. And if the team is tired and the, the client is not, not happy, that's just a disaster. <laughs> sa, ano, sa game dev. So um, for us, that's what we do. We try to make sure we are at least 10 steps uh, ahead of it um, for project managers. It's very important that you, you don't just know on schedule. Kailangan, you actually know what comes with the work. Like you understand the art or you understand a bit of programming, a bit of quality assurance. It actually helps a lot 
if you understand your teammates, yung synergy na ilang nila to work with each other because game dev is para sobrang it's a whole team. You cannot be in game dev if you want to be alone. <laughs> so that's really important. Right. Yeah. Uh, and I think to add into that as well, um, I think a lot of um, management as well comes along with um, uh, seeing or um, predicting what these problems are beforehand. Like like what you said, Miss Dots, being 10 steps ahead yeah, and then avoiding it as you go. So uh, I guess that's something to just tie up both answers of uh, Miss Dots and Serenia. So thank you for that uh, for that uh, input. And uh, actually, we can move on to the next questions. And um, the uh, may I, uh, no. may I quickly oh, answer yes. the question? Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, yes, just of course. for um, if, if if you're working on your own IP and like you're working on your own game and you have no sure, parang external forces, um, parang giving you deadlines. Uh, obviously, it's, it's still important to have your own deadlines. But something that um, that we did so squeaky wheel like every time like our internal deadline was coming up okay itong month na to may launch tayo kasi we were an early we had an early access game and so we had to launch something um, constantly um, so once we were nearing our deadline and it looked like we weren't going to parang finish everything that we had planned then it's the time to say okay like what's the stuff that we're willing to sacrifice and that's also another thing that that you can that another part of tool that you can use to like um to to kind of manage your deadlines or manage your expectations and it also helps clarify like what's what's the most important thing for the game because you'll have a discussion about like what is important about the legato yes or no and then if it's no then okay great we can we can take it out and then we've just saved ourselves like it's like some time. So that's one other thing that then that you can also uh, do for for your own games. Yeah, um, I'd like to add something lang then. So in production, there are three things that you have to balance. So that's scope, time, and cost. You have to understand these three things. Um, you make adjustment in any um, variable, pero dapat quality yung core ng decision. What um, Ano yung weight na ina-add niya sa overall game nyo? I speak on own IP games then We make own IP games. So, ayan, to add nga lang din with yung... I agree with Sir Ryan. So, you have to list down all the things that you need. You have to separate your needs sa um, nice-to-haves. Sa gusto nyo lang kasi maganda siya. So, you have to deliver the core first before you add the polishes. You do it later. Okay? So, for example lang sa amin sa Monster Notes, um, we just launched our game, Sproutle. It's a um, unique match three game. There's a twist to it. So anyway, um, we delivered. We tried to deliver the core first, and there's um, bits of meta game to it. And then later on, we're planning to um, expand other features. So yeah, um, you just gotta know an yung kailangan yung important. Yes. All those answers are tie up very well together, and I hope that um, answers the question. Um, and I think we can proceed with the next question. Last two questions, actually, for this, um, and then we can um, proceed to the questions given by our um, audience from the FB chat. So, okay, how did you manage the work from home switch brought about by the pandemic? I can um, start. <clears throat> Uh, yes, sir, Jester. Okay. Uh, for us, it was super hard because first, ako personally, I am a, a traditional guy. I love face-to-face. -face. I never really wanted to allow people to work from home uh, unless kailangan talaga. Uh, pero pandemic changed everything. <laughs> uh, so we had to adapt. I have to adapt. I had to adapt. So, so especially in the first few weeks or month, we uh, delivered namin lahat ng ng hardware sa kanya kanyang bahay. Uh, so, tapos we came up with different solutions on how we will be doing our our check in. I you know. So we set up all the tools that we need. We started trying and testing different tools, hanggang sa mafil namin yung tool na pinagkusunan namin, and we ended up with Trello, Discord. 
and Google Workspace. Uh, tapos, ngayon, I think we're okay na. I think most are now very comfortable working from home compared to nagsisimula. Nagsisimula, sobrang gulo, hirap, distracted, uh, um, your mental health, you suffer, etc. Pero now, I think everyone's well adapted. So now, I, th- I can say it's okay. We're okay. And now we're allowing. Uh, pandemic has changed me. So we, even when I pandemic, we will allow people to work from home permanently. So, in summary, thank you. Anyone else? Um, for us, um, if tomorrow you lockdown, I think that was a uh, Friday. Lockdown started. Uh, <laughs> Thursday, um, mabigat na discussion yon na people will not be allowed to commute, and then people will start losing jobs. So. Really, yun talaga yung reality na una naming um, hinarap na if we can't go to work, we will lose clients. So basically, talagang the very same day or the next uh, the, the next day at least, I think um, talagang dinala na namin lahat ng PCs, everything. Uh, we had to assist everyone to pack, bubble wrap, <laughs> or kung ano mang kailangan nyo, just get your stuff at home and set up and then the internet comes next. We had to make sure that everybody had access to good um, internet. You know, pinaka important. And then, um, for for management, basically, it's empath- empathy. Na we're not living in a perfect world anymore. Hindi na siya face to face. The efficiency bababa. Uh, marami ng factors there na uutusan ka ng kasama mo sa bahay kila kailangan mong mag-set aside na at least three hours just to get basic needs kasi kailangan mong pumila. Um, kailangan talaga ng empathy na hindi na siya perfect eight-hour work. Um, broken time. You have to be very um, co- um, conscious as well na yung tao hindi nagsasalita, yun pala kailangan ng mag-leave. So you have to force them to take the leave. Dude, kailangan mo na magpahinga. Ipahinga mo na yan. Hindi na siya katulad dati na you can see it for your your very own eyes na, ay, hirap yung tao, kailangan na tulong, kailangan ko sa akin. Ngayon, it's more of pakiramdaman through Discord, which is basically chatting and voice call. Um, that's how work from home changed us. Um, it made us a little bit more um, sensitive, I-, I hope sensitive, to each and everyone's needs. Kasi iba-iba, and it's, it's still evolving. <laughs> We're still here. <laughs> Ayun. So that's how work from home changed us in this way. I agree with what Ms. Jusat said, especially the word na empathetic dapat na the way how we manage our teams. Um, we, in the of we stopped tracking um, uh, like every hour that you work with us because, you know, with the work from home, we know internet will be down, you're may kailang ka i homeschool na bata or whatever. There's a million reasons why uh, efficiency will try to break down but of course we try to support the team members as much as possible uh in terms of the digital pi- uh, pivot we tried uh everything we we still set like a daily stand up ganitong oras everyone should turn on their cameras so we can see people face to face to at least have that human connection of seeing people on the other side of the screen and we uh one thing that i think was not mentioned is security um, especially for a large AAA company, security is one of the most uh, hardest things to work with uh, in terms of um, uh, in terms of the work from home shift. Uh, so uh, I might not be speaking on behalf of everyone, but this is how we do it. We actually use remote desktop uh, for our team members. We're in. They had the powerful PC set up in in the office in the building. And they can connect to it with their uh, home computers, or if they don't have a home computers, one will be provided for them. Uh, and that's how we manage the security, at least of the project's confidentiality, to make sure that you can't do screenshots, you can't do recordings of it uh, on your own. And of course, we have to re- constantly remind everyone about the uh, the security culture that we have in Ubisoft, the NDAs, the whole, you know, don't leak uh, this thing and this thing. Uh, 
So yeah, uh, empathetic and definitely a digital pivot to everything that we used to do has been one of the key factors to manage the work from home scenario. Um, so I'll uh, quickly answer that for, for squeaky wheel, it was never a problem because uh, we work from home talaga kami from, from the start. Um, and so when the, when the pandemic happened, it's like, just kind of, uh, and just work as usual. I mean, obviously, um, there are other like the circumstances we had to take into consideration, but it was not a, uh, a huge problem for us. Um, but just to share a little bit parang yung yung uh, process time before was we would work from home um for most of the the month but then every two weeks we would have a personal uh, parang a, a face-to-face meetup at a co-working space you know when when, when co-working spaces were still a uh, a thing um because like like uh, jester said it is still important to have that face-to-face uh every now and then and then we would also take that opportunity kapag nag face-to-face meeting kami. Uh, afterwards, we would have dinner and or and drinks or whatever. And so that's that's how we managed um, our, our work situation before. And um, the only, yeah, so the, for us, the only di- real difficulty nung nag-start yung pandemic is wala na yung face-to-face. And so we had to figure out other ways of like meeting up online and um, parang keeping up motivation that way. And... Uh, yeah, like Marika really helped us out with that a lot. Like we, she organized, parang like online. Parang we had an online Christmas party. Na may mga, uh, may mga board game, online board games come in. That's, that's the one way that we. Um, that's the one thing I think that that kind of affected us during uh, the pandemic is the now the the inability to see each other face to face was. I know, uh, it made things more difficult, even though we were already used to um, kind of working from home. Yeah, I think um, at this point in uh, since 2021 is about to, you know, the year is about to end, almost over a year of the pandemic happening here in the Philippines, and the restrictions are going uh, l- more lenient. Uh, there's more uh, time for us or m- more uh, permissions for us to go about nowadays. Um, I think it actually um, gave everyone an opportunity to explore work from home or even hybrid um, workspaces or work uh, environment. And um, despite the struggles, I think um, this also brought about uh, um, some good experience to everyone. And yeah, um, that's that's what my, my take on this, at, at least. And so for the last question uh, of this panel discussion, Apart from monetary incentives, what other perks or benefits keep game developers happy in a team or in a company? Pizza and donuts, synergy <laughs> <laughs> eight. But uh, basically, uh, no, no, no. Uh, we uh, food is one thing that uh, at least when we were back in face of it, it was one thing that we always have. Uh, sa, uh, sa studio. But of course, um, it, when it comes to other perks and benefits, I'll use this opportunity to, uh, you know, flex a bit, uh, Ubisoft, to try to find people <laughs> to join us. Uh, we have uh, insurance, healthcare. It's a pretty big thing. Uh, we also have uh, Uplay access. Basically, um, every Ubisoft team member from anywhere gets access to all Ubisoft games uh even the far cry 6 or new released games and we have uh, learning platforms uh, where you can take courses in management english french or um, i think we also have mandarin if you want to and of course the occasional merchandise from the team uh, uh from the company that's uh, we give team members a uh, freebies that you know team members always like to collect so um uh, this is what, like the small perks, of course, but there's also the um, the more benefits that you try to provide people. Miss Gem talked about it early. We try to accommodate leaves of peoples. We know mental health is important. Vacation is important. Uh, we also offer, aside from vacations, we also be very careful with our inclusivity clause in terms of you know being inclusive to all 
uh, the norms that we have. Uh, um, uh, we don't. We make sure we're not particular to any race, gender, or profile. It's just uh, everyone's equal. So I think those little things makes the working place, or at least the team, or the company, a bit more uh, enjoyable for people to come and join. So yeah, that's one thing that we do. Anyone else? Uh, okay. Uh, aside from monetary incentives, we offer, you know, like different upscaling programs. Uh, so we 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 try to create uh, different upscaling programs for the different teams. So we allot a few hours uh, every week, or maybe a few hours every month, to do upscaling programs. So may. We have dedicated people who's in charge of creating these programs, uh, who will lead the programs, who will teach the other people on, on how they can get better on some part of their job. Uh, so we try to do this as much as we can, uh, and we're still trying to improve that. Uh, so we think that's very important. Tapos we, of course, during the you know the quarter the uh, PPE or or evaluations, we ask them anong goal nila, anong, anong, anong gusto nilang itry, anong gusto nilang next step sa career nila. We ask them and we actually let them. We we have experienced writers who wanted to be artists, right? artists who want to be writers, programmers who want to be artists. We allow them to move around. Uh, we have animators who want to be an artist, etc., etc. So we... we try to accommodate all those requests, pero there's a certain limit like, okay, sure, if you can handle, if you can achieve the quality that, that at least we're looking for, sure, you can continue. If not, you have to go back. Uh, then you have to like study on your own. Yeah. Ang gasa ma-achieve mo yung quality para makapunta ka sa bagong position. Uh, then of course, yung, especially during the pandemic, yung health card, yung insurance, sobrang, so, sobrang, sobrang important. Uh, based on personal experience, that's super, super important. Uh, with, with insurance nga, ma- marami pa rin namulube dahil sa, sa COVID. Imagine if without an insurance. Uh, so that's super, super important ngayon. Then, Can I just, uh, uh, no, sorry, could follow up on this uh, insurance. <laughs> Parang yung, so, so yeah, uh, we, we did provide like health insurance for our, uh, no, for, for everyone in Skikui also. And parang siguro, like, my proudest moment as a CEO was when yung, yung nanay ng isang employee namin parang nagpasalamat siya sa akin because uh, no, they had a health card na covered din yung, yung parents siya. It's like, ah, okay, I've done a good job. Yes, yes. Yes. <laughs> Yes, meron din sa amin, like for example, uh, because of the, because we update namin ng maayos yung PhilHealth on time, kahit kakastart niya lang, nagamit niya kagad, tapos na-cover kagad yung health, yung, yung hospital bills. That's super important, especially during the pandemic. Uh, other perks pa, I think, uh, yung mga company activities, like yung, like for example, as nung November, meron kami nung si Mr. Manila, yung, yung, so they, they enjoyed that, those online parties, movie nights, etc. Tapos, yung mga typical stuff na. Pero, I think, sa amin pinaka-important is yung, yung pag-align ng goals ng, ng company dun sa tao at yung, yung upscaling programs. Um, siguro, add ko na lang in everything na sinabi nila. Um, one thing na nakaka-contribute sa happiness ng isang employee or ng team member is yung culture ng company. You pair it with um, easygoing and friendly people. So as in Monster Nuts, we try to avoid yung hierarchy. So I guess na-maintain namin or meron lang kaming happy, chill culture. But we get the job done pa din naman. So we try to avoid yung mga seniority. Ganun. We have so-called point persons who's in charge of um, certain parts of the project. So I think big factor yun if you healthy yung environment, happy, uh, it maintains yung happiness ng mga tao. And then, other thing is, um, sa mga napasuhan kong company here sa um, Philippines, uh, 
I think monster nuts is a snap galante sa leaves. So we have good number of leaves. Um, we also try yung reward system as I've mentioned before. And I think isa sa pinaka important is you try to grow your teammates on their career or on their field. And lang. Uh, for us in Tika Chicks, medyo, um, medyo kakaiba in terms of um, what other than like the monetary incentives, the insurance, um, competitive market salary. Um, madalas, since we're on art sourcing, we get people na they're very driven on what or saan mapupunta yung names nila on titles. So important sa amin yung variety of work. Or alamabawa, if you're the artist ka, you're working on like you want organic, meaning ay uh, mga sinasculpt sa ZBrush na assets, uh, then it's the job of the management to re- like really find work that will entice them to do that craft. Um, so yun, important sa amin yung mga ganun. Um, for, so, and every year, nag-iba, tumataas yung quality. Then, nah- ang hirap maghanap ng same people na ganun, pero pag nakahanap ka, and you give them the work that they really love and passionate about then yun doon sila nag-grow and prosper and masaya. Doon kalmado yung, kalmado yung team, uh, masaya. simple lang yung culture. Then motivated, hopefully motivated lahat to work. Right. Well, one thing that we used to do, again, this is uh, parang a pre-pandemic thing that uh, medyo mahirap yung replicate ngayon, was when we had opportunities to travel because of mga conferences, um, we tried to allocate that to different people based on whatever their interests. Mahilig sa Japan, we had an opportunity to show to go to Tokyo game show. So like we, we sent some people there. Some people went to Korea. Yung isang programmer namin, yung, yung kuya niya that, that time was working sa, sa Kuala Lumpur. Tapos merong level up uh, games sa Kuala Lumpur. So like, okay, sige, you should go so that you can I know, you can see your family. Um, yeah, but then, syempre, ano, <laughs> medyo wala na yung mga ganong oper- Might be a while before we have those kinds of opportunities. Okay. One last, really last addition to what Miss Talk said na uh, with regards to the happiness of team members, na aside from the benefits, the perks, the the material stuff, we also, uh, ako personally, I think um, working with team members, transparency is a big deal uh, when it comes to trying to keep them engaged and motivated throughout what the company is facing. For example, it's always better for me to tell to give updates to team members. Eto nangyayari. This is where the work that you did went to. Uh, uh, this is the actual feedback of people. Uh, be it good, be it bad. You kind of package it in a transparent way that you're not hiding teams from them. And it help if if you have the correct team members, they take that feedback and they treasure it. They either take it as constructive criticism or they either take it as a pride prideful moment. Na ah yeah, my work did good. So, and you also keep them uh, updated on what's happening in and out with the other teams, with the other, uh, uh, with what other places that they don't generally get updates from. Ano ginagawa ng publishing team, the marketing team, if you're working with developers, to keep them inspired. Na oh, yung art na ginawa ko nasa mousepad na, yung art na ginawa ko nasa uh, as a billboard na sa Edsa or something like that. So definitely something that uh, can also keep them motivated is being uh, transparent on to letting them know that their work is being uh, properly utilized and give them a uh, you know a point of something that to be proud with. Yeah, I'd like to jump on that a little bit then, but sorry, I, we keep extending this. <laughs> but like, yeah, no, but that really matters though because like we're at the end of the day we're we're making games for for people for for players and so um one thing that i also used to do is uh kasi yung yung parang uh what's this yung comment form sa, sa squeaky wheel na website actually goes to my my email and so i would get all of the emails both good and bad <laughs> feedback so kapag merong good feedback na someone will say oh like i really enjoyed my ga- the game or oh like like my, my my daughter really loves your game and blah blah blah. Then you know, champion, it's it's that's great to hear. And then I'll I'll take that email and I'll share it with the team and say, hey guys, like this is you know this is what's happening. Like I know that but sometimes we get buried in the in the code or in the art and like it feels like we're 
kind of just pushing stuff out into the ether and nothing's happening. But then, you know, there are real people playing our games and having re really great experiences. And that's why we do this. And so the more you can share with your team, yung mga ganang classing reactions, uh, that's definitely a huge uh, motivator. Right. Okay. I think that concludes our panel discussion for the night. And uh, before we conclude this event, we actually have just real quick, um, we have some questions from the audience. So if it's okay that we can go through that. Um, so first question is, how do you manage conflict in your team? Sige, sila gusto mo una dito. Um, sige, ako. Um, isama niya si Tulfo. Joke. Joke lang. Kaso. Um, I think um, one thing to do is you listen to both parties, the conflicting parties. Um, you talk to them individually and then kapag narinig mo na yung both sides, um, you meet them together and then find a compromise and then try to resolve it. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think I... <laughs> yeah, it's okay. I think yung conflict. Nagkaka-conflict na po yung mga asin. <laughs> so it's fun. <laughs> Very uh, ano, nice segue. <laughs> I, I, I'll follow up with what Ms. Jem said. After you meet them, after the conflict, you give them, begin with spada each member, and then you do trial by combat. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, after 30 you, seconds by answer. <laughs> yeah, after you hear their sides, you basically you try to you try to explore which uh which compromise they can get you try to explain the points to each other because normally if they if they have you try to be the middleman uh, yeah your comment is also valid your comment is also valid but this is the most valid point among them all and you try to explain it and you of course if you had the proper team members who listen the proper team members who who under who's open-minded enough to listen to the uh, to the um, to the the facts or the information being presented to them, then that should resolve the conflict. Uh, um, get one of the biggest problems with game developments is when you start to put ego and pride into the mix, and that generally doesn't end up well. That's why, like we, we've been saying from the beginning, uh, looking for the correct team members will at least uh, limit or minimize this chance na mangyari ganitong klase ng conflicts where it cannot be resolved. If you have the correct team members and the correct attitude of people, conflicts will be easily resolved just by presenting facts to each other. Yeah, um, it's, uh, just to ano, parang continue that, that thought now, um, we can also tie this back into what something Jester said earlier about yung, yung motivation and alignment. That um, a lot of times, you know, people will have um, this disagreement, and it's not really. But you'll have a disagreement about something, but actually, it's it's not it's not really that thing that they're coming into conflict with. But it's there's there's something deeper that you kind of have to. If you have the time, you have to. Parang kailang suri in Ano ba ano ba talaga yung pinagawa nyo? Like it might not be what they, they 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 think it is or what they say it is oh cutie um <laughs> this uh, um but yeah but like so one good thing is like if if you're if you're talking to the two parties right like if if if, if you're both aligned and parang, let's say you had a parang, a meeting before parang, uh, an, um, parang a, a process where you have you've talked already and you you've come to an understanding about what it is we are trying to do then you can also kind of parang remind them that okay like this is what we are trying to do right this is what we said that we are all aligned in doing now um this this conflict like how how do we uh, how do we parang resolve this conflict in terms of getting us back uh, no, in, in, into alignment with what we want to do and like parang so so having that shared uh, goal and having that shared idea of what the entire team is is moving towards is a good way to um, to kind of resolve these kinds of conflicts. When just remind each other that you know when we're we're trying to do this, we're trying to make this kind of game, and as long as we 
um, are still moving in that direction, then we can have some disagreements about how we approach it. But let's just try to remember what it is that we're trying to do. And that usually can start a conversation about how, like how you can work together better and all of that stuff. Anyone else? Taking some of like what Sir Ryan said about alignment. Um, I have I have a lot of experience with the conflict between two um, staff members, I think, but more of like conflict. Po ano yung gusto ng ar- nung, nung employee um, or yung goals ng employee dun sa goals ng um, let's say management. Um, I think it's very important that um, to be calm and uh, be factual. Uh, factual as in ano, what's the cause of the problem um, and then lastly I think you should be open to solutions um, and sometimes hindi lang isa yung solution there could be multiple solutions and then um, always be aligned if ever um, the plan is to resolve the conflict uh, given a duration of time then uh, make sure both parties are, are aware what what the steps are going to be, how we think uh, we're gonna get to that goal. Ayun. So for me it's we have uh it's important to be factual. Right. Hello. Can I continue? I'm sorry I got distracted. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I was saying um you make sure that you hear wo- both parties, right? Um you make sure that um yung team member na they feel that They've been heard. That hindi mo lang dismiss basta yung side nila. Important yun eh, na you acknowledge them. And ayun, um, you try to um, work and then eventually you follow up. Kakamusahin mo kung okay na ba. How's their relationship going? Or yeah. Ayun lang naman. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, uh, narealize ko lang. For me, um, factual in terms of pending yung facts ng management, hindi naman alam nung ng employee or yung fact ni employee hindi rin pala directly alam ni management so ano important din talaga yung open table discussion tali hindi siya face to face but at least the discussions should be hindi siya rushed uh, ayun nga sa Mr. Ryan and Jeb kailangan talaga yeah, totally yun kasi no, there's a lot of cases that, and this is something that uh, will happen more in uh in a situation where you're working from home, na parang one person might assume something while the other person does not. Parang magkaiba yung, yung tingin yeah. niyo sa, sa facts. And so, it is much more difficult, but like, I've just found even 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 here, parang sa, 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 sa paradox, like so many problems are caused by like people just having different ideas of what the truth is. And then once you yeah. come together, parang you just have, parang yeah, but it's like there's a huge problem, seemingly huge problem, but then you have like a five-minute conversation. Ah, ah okay, yun lang pala, ganun lang pala yun. Okay, sige. That was, like, it's done. And so, yeah, just having more open communication, more clarity when, when you communicate with each other solves so many problems. Okay. All right. So, um, just to quickly uh, move on. Actually, um, let me just go for the a last question, if that's okay. This is the last audience question that I'll, I'll, I'll slip into this discussion. So, okay. How do you keep the salary process fair? And how do you offer opportunities for professional and personal growth? Okay. So, uh, I can speak on behalf of what we practice. Uh, basically, what we do is... We have a salary grid uh, wherein it's usually um, reviewed by the company based on the market average, based on um, based on what the uh, what the positions are, and we call it the grid because basically, there uh, depending on the position, there's the level of salary, and to keep that grid competitive, we compare it with the market average and see what other people's are working with in terms of opportunities for professional and personal growth when it comes to professional growth it's always uh it's always a part where in um uh, aside from your day-to-day task your goal is to always try to level up if you're a junior your goal is to be a middle level programmer then if you're a senior you you might want to start looking into being either uh, a lead or an expert or if you want to switch to management 
So uh, the career path has always been open from day one. Like when you begin, okay, you want we want you to set goals in a year's time. What's your goal? And we'll try to help you achieve it. Um, so in personal growth, we offer you know learnings uh, that is that may not be related to work. Uh, personally, I, I I'm taking Russian lessons here uh, for personal growth. So yun yung mga isa sa mga offerings na, and sometimes they even gave us master class uh, access if you want to learn something uh, out of your own picking. So at least we try to cater those uh, personal growth factors of uh, team members. Okay, uh, let me answer that then. Uh, so in our case, uh, we pretty much do the same as Daniel. Uh, we we do a, a study of the market average. Uh, tapos we 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 put a salary range for each position. Tapos in our case, we make it available to everyone. Everyone can see it. So everyone can see the salary range nung bawat position. Uh, I think it's been a while since the update namin yun, pero we will update that uh, uh, this coming uh, few months kasi it has to be updated then. Uh, we make sure na we, we try to stay competitive, the, especially in the most important positions. For example, uh, tapos we... Then... So yung so yung very transparent kami doon. Tapos we are very open, for example, if there are conflicts dun sa na research ng HR, dun sa actual average na alam ng tao, they just talk to HR, tell them, no, that's not the average. We should be getting this and that. Uh, and we are open. Uh, there are a lot of cases na may ganon, and we simply talk to them, we do a research, and we verify. If it's true, then we'll adjust. Uh, so, tapos, how do you offer opportunities for professional and personal growth? As mentioned earlier, we have upscaling programs. Uh, we have uh, low upscaling programs, tapos mid-level, tapos high-level upscaling programs. For low to mid-level, uh, we don't require any yung bond. Uh, we will only require yung bond kapag like at least worth 100k pesos yung, yung training. Like for example, yung enroll namin sa CG Spectrum, for example, for two months, tapos we'll pay for everything. Yun, that's the time we, we will only ask for bond. Pero yung, yung like yung training lang na ginawa namin internally, uh, yung may, tapos it's a combination of different uh, online programs that we just merged together to, to fit our our company uh, goals and, and processes. So, yun, meron din kami nun, pero we don't ask for band. Uh, professional personal growth. Personal growth, we, our HR team usually comes up with different, ano, programs like, like, uh, nag-offer sa na advice for, not just about professional work, like in mental health, yung, how, how to handle financial stuff, yung, yung how to be an adult, <laughs> adulting stuff, yung mga ganon. Kasi a lot of our, a lot of our people, because we're in the game dev industry, right? So a lot of our people are like introverts. Tapos, hindi uh, masadong magani may pag-usap gaya niya. Tapos hindi niya magani sa mga life skills. <laughs> so we try to help them with that. Then uh, we try to give them advice as much as possible. Tapos we try to be very open. Uh, yun yung sa amin. Uh -huh. Sa amin naman, apart from a salary range, um, we try to talk, even before pa nung face-to-face, um, -face, we try to talk to each um, employee at least twice a year. Um, kasi yung goals nagbabago, yung, yung needs nagbabago, and then we try to very much tra be transparent on the project na dadating, and then ask them very, very much, ano yung project na gusto nilang ma-experience, or what kind of work yung gusto nilang ma-experience, anong kinds of tasks yung interested silang gawin. And then, uh, uh, very early on, pa, lalo na pag junior, um, we try to gauge if they want to be leaders or meron din tao kasi na they are capable of being seniors. Pero 
um, they're not really sure if they want to be leaders, like leading a very small team or a big team. So we also try to align that because um, mahirap naman if they're pressured and then the, ma, dun pa sila mag, mag break. So you lose that kind of investment with them, your relationship na na build mo na. Um, in terms of salary, we try to same with Sergester. We try to uh, do more research on what, what the salaries are. Um, we have a few um, monetary incentives as well. And then um, in terms of personal growth, um, with talking with them, we try to gauge as well ano yung goal nila in terms of are they going to start a family soon? Um, that's important. Kasi if hindi naman namin kaya ma-match yung, yung salary na ganun, then we have to really discuss it openly na um, uh, we can't really handle that kind of um, adjustment right now or by next year kaya na adjustment. So it's a hard discussion. But it's the, it's the type of discussion that can make or break a team. Okay, sige. So, I'd like to add rin, no? So, kind of similar kila thoughts sa Secret Six. Um, sa amin, um, from the start pa lang, sa interview pa lang, um, it's always open for discussion, tatanongin na kagad, and then we're, we try to be very transparent with the whole team even sa ano sa sa interview pa nga lang if afford ba ng company or hindi and then ayun um pinag-uusapan siya uh, it's yun nga, it, it's discussion talaga so sa other than that yung basis din namin sa race is yung sa performance evaluation so um tsaka yung impact sa team kung marami ba nagagawa and then yun nga kung okay yung inform performance so we try to accommodate that and then para din hindi maging stagnant so they go hand in hand eh, yung salary appraisal and ano and then ayun honest kami like in everything um yung revenue and sales um meron kaming monthly meeting uh, very transparent so alam din natin kung anong state ng company ganun so yeah, that's how we do it in monster nuts yeah uh, some men like um, I guess yeah, you guys are a lot more organized than, than we ever were. Uh, <laughs> but yung, uh, so in general, it's, you realize our salaries are always very low, I think, compared to even like even my salary was relatively low compared to um, regular industry rates. But yung, yung ginawa namin is to, to compensate for that. We had a very, um, we had a very generous, I think, uh, profit sharing scheme. Na yung, parang yung basic idea namin was just like, we always want to have at least one year's worth of runway so that we can operate the the company for at least one year if like all else fails and we like we start like bleeding money um and then anything on top of that will be uh allocated to all the other team members based on how long they've been with the company and so yeah but it's a very fairly simple like a mathematical thing just like when did the company start how long have you been with the company and so you get but on X percent of the the profit sharing amount based on that, and I don't know if that that scales for uh, when you start growing the company. And but um, that was also kind of one of the reasons why I thought that I couldn't continue with the company as it as it was structured. Because if we're for a six person team, maybe that makes sense. Once you grow larger than 20, 30 people, maybe that becomes a little bit more more difficult. Yung yung ganong classing. Uh, uh, in Ganon Classing uh, structure. Although I do know that, that Paradox Interactive has some sort of uh, profit sharing um, system with its employees. I don't know entirely how, how it works on you know, parang a company of, uh, of that scale. Okay, I think um, that, that concludes our panel discussion for uh, uh, game dev talks mod four how to manage a team so thank you to not only the the panelists uh thank you so much for your time the organizers of this event and of course our participants at our um live fb live so um at this point i think i should call on miss marix hi i'm here <laughs> hello guys i'm back so i'll just close the event um hold on so, okay. So, on behalf of Project Piggy, thank you. Thank you, Bea. Thank you, Jem. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, 
Rinyal. Thank you, Jester. Thanks, Miss Josette. And thank you. Who, who else I <laughs> forgot? Anyway, thank thank you everyone for um supporting us and of course uh, hopefully our our dear audience uh was able to learn um learn something you know tonight from from everyone okay so i'll just um put everybody in the backstage say bye, <laughs> bye. 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 see you in the backstage thank you. thanks everyone <laughs>